But I've got to ask you one little personal question. I mean, were you in the Grateful Dead at five years old? This guy looks so young. I can't believe you've been in the business this long. I think I started playing with him when I was 15 or 16, something like that. Well, then that makes sense. Can you tell me why Bobby and the Midnight? What? Well, I've been playing with, with the guys in the other band, with the Grateful Dead, for a long time. And it was just to get out, get out into the world, have some fun, meet, meet some new people, maybe have some more fun, maybe learn something. Who's in the band? I have uh, Billy Cobham on drums, Bobby Cochran on guitar, Kenny Gradney on bass, and Dave Garland on keyboards and saxophone. It's great having you here, and I'm looking forward to hearing the music of Bobby and the Midnight. On with the show. You got it. San Francisco itself. It's just the place. 
It's the it's the hub of whatever goes goes on around it. There's Marin up here. There's Berkeley. There's uh, there's the Palo Alto, Stanford area. It's all those places, and San Francisco is the hub of it. And and uh, it's just it's the the eye of the storm, and it's always happening. And there's always something to do. There's always something to get into. There's always something fresh. One of the bands that helped spark the San Francisco music explosion was the Charlatans. And that's funny because they pretty much got together as a visual trip. Uh, sometimes I, I think uh, some of the charlatans were wearing costumes, yeah. I never thought of myself in a costume, though. But uh, George would wear a little, say, he looked like a sailor one day, cute little sailor, and then the next day he'd be a cowboy, and then he'd be a, an eight, nine, 1890 uh, bank executive, you know. But I, I, I guess, uh, for certain people, you could consider them in costumes, yeah. I call it clothes, though. <laughs> it was an experimental period in rock. Psychedelia and the love generation were merely aids to the experiment, and San Francisco was the laboratory. The San Francisco spirit grabbed hold of the spotlight. It was a spirit of youth and protest, as was Country Joe and the Fish and the Youngbloods, Quicksilver Messenger Service, and Moby Grape. In the early days, there was like, you know, the Santana and Sly Stone, it was like uh, the electric flag. Uh, there was, uh, you know, God, there was, you know, Jefferson Airplane, the Grateful Dead. I mean, the whole scene was, you know, in the 50s. Make money would be to start a band and put together these guys, and I looked for guys and found guys. First I found Paul, and I found uh, Yarmer, and we had told everybody and built it up and built it up, and People would, in this town, would say, what's Jefferson Airplane? I don't know, you know. So everybody came to see what it was, and it took off, because people were looking for new things, and uh, everybody was having a good time, and rock and roll was just the most happening thing going at the time, you know. In 1966, rock and roll entrepreneur Bill Graham sensed something was going on in San Francisco music when he opened the Fillmore Auditorium. Within a short time, this landmark ballroom became the hub of a new music scene. The Bay Area has born in it, but and the Bay Area also gathers from other areas musicians and artists and filmmakers and poets and writers. Uh, I've always, I've always thought, uh, with no disrespect intended, that the Bay Area becomes a resting place for professional rejects, people from other parts of the country. I'm, I was a frustrated character actor out of New York, and I came here to visit my sister's stadium, and I said, "My God." If you're going to fail anyway, this is a great place to, to not having made it and start all over again. And I think many, many people feel that way. You, you, you think of the musicians who live here now, who came here from other areas. It's an amazing list, going back to when I mean, the first guy was Michael uh, Bloomfield out of, out of Chicago, and then Janice out of, out of Texas. And then you well, did. It sort of fell together in a coffee house in Palo Alto, down south of San Francisco. Uh, a bunch of folkies just sort of fell together right about the time the Beatles were making it big and electric, electric guitars looked good to us and so we sort of befriended the owner of a music store while letting him play bass in the band and, uh, and started a rock and roll band and it grew to be the Grateful Dead. The 60s world of mixed up politics, broken hearts and moon landings. San Francisco, and especially Haight-Ashbury, became a destination and a livable utopia for thousands of young Americans. Like the Pied Piper, it was the music that attracted them. ...round into the 70s. And we're going to pick it up from there with the Greg Kinn Band, Journey, and lots more. About SF is you can go into a bar and see, you know, like the guy in the dead Kennedy sitting there with a guy from the Starship and, you know, Somebody else. So it's like all the generations seem to get along pretty good. We don't have that that real heavy uh, competition, cutthroat. More like it. But I'm not putting that down because I think a lot of bands that come from that scene are tough. Mm -hmm. You know, Definitely. not us. We're <laughs> completely <laughs> flabby, soft. We don't care. Well, is there is there a Bay Area sound, or is it just a? What do you think? Well, you know, it started. Yeah, it. There is. There's there's definitely a Bay Area sound, and it kind of started with the Bo Brummels. Remember them? Sure, laugh, laugh, laugh. And they were the first, I guess, San Francisco group. And then there were the Starship and Quicksilver. And to be a San Francisco band, I mean, we were from here and we played here at the ballrooms, but it was always part of 
uh, our strategy to be at least known as an American band and not pigeonholed as a San Francisco band, particularly with uh, that sound, because we didn't have that kind of sound. We weren't a, a, a blues jam band, per se. We weren't a psychedelic band. We were, uh, we were more influenced by broader American musical roots. As the first wave subsided and we moved into the 70s, the San Francisco sound turned over a new beat. Hot tune. The beat doesn't stop here. Not when there's new groups always breaking musical turf. The future's bright for bands like Romeo Void, The Residents, Billy Satellite, and of course the Greg Kinban and Bobby. <laughs> 